everyone, I'm Dr. Richard DiCenso, author of Beyond Medicine, clinical director for Matrix Transformation, and developer of the Matrix Assessment Profile. Today I want to explore some new ways of thinking about some very old concepts in healthcare diagnostics. Now, as many of you probably already recognize, conventional diagnostic techniques are the gold standard when it comes to diagnosing disease. However, this leaves us with two very interesting questions. Number one, what do you do if your test results are positive? In other words, you've been diagnosed with a disease. Well, this is actually the topic material for a series of future videos in which I discuss specific conditions. However, the second question is oftentimes far more important, and that is, what do you do if your test results are negative? By that I mean, you're being told that we can't find anything wrong, that the symptoms are normal for your age, that they'll go away in time, that we have to run more tests, or that they're all in your head. Well, consider this. The threshold for conventional diagnostic testing is a diagnosable disease. So, if your test results are negative and you continue to experience symptoms, more than likely, these symptoms represent an attempt on the part of your body to communicate to you that something's wrong. But the predicament is, how do you interpret these symptoms? How do you know what they mean and how do you know what to do? Well, obviously you're going to need some guidance. You're going to need some direction. You're going to need to have an interpreter help you understand what these symptoms represent. In other words, in order to get from where you are, which is symptoms, to where you want to be, which is a solution for those symptoms, you're going to need a MAP. Now, MAP is an acronym for the Matrix Assessment Profile. But before I explain to you how all of this works, I want to get clear on a couple of issues. Number one, the MAP is not a test. And number two, it does not diagnose disease. However, it is an evaluation that takes into consideration a broad spectrum of information, including an analysis of your biological fluids, to make a decision about what the potential cause of your chronic symptoms really is. Now I'll give you an example of how all this works in just a moment. But first, let's explore some additional concepts and some related terminology that will help you navigate the matrix a little more efficiently. Now I call this evaluation the matrix assessment profile intentionally. The human matrix is meant to represent the broad spectrum of influences that interact to produce our human experience. Now within this matrix, there are three potential areas, I call them realms, in which imbalances and deficiencies can occur to produce symptoms. There's the physical realm, the biochemical realm, and the psycho-emotional, spiritual, or virtual realm. Now all of the elements within these three realms are closely entwined and obviously they're going to be combined differently to produce a different experience for each one of us. But imbalances and deficiencies can occur within any one of these realms or in multiple realms to produce chronic symptoms that are not diagnosable on conventional testing. Now another term that you're going to hear quite frequently is caveat. A caveat is nothing more than a guideline. It's a tool that I've developed to help you navigate the matrix. For instance, the very first caveat is everything works. Everything works most effectively when it's applied to a specific set of circumstances for which it's most indicated. So that means that you're going to have a wide selection of choices, particularly in this age of information technology, when it comes to making decisions about how to manage your symptoms or how to manage a disease process. Now these decisions are going to be based on information that's presented to you by your healthcare provider, by friends who care about you, by magazines, by information sources from radio and television and the internet, and they're going to seem overwhelming at some point. But you have to understand 
that they're all valid. They all have potential. They all have benefit. And they all have value. So the bottom line is everything works. Everything has benefit. But it may not work and it may not have benefit for you in the given set of circumstances that you're experiencing. So part of the trick in arriving at a solution for a problem is matching the solution with the problem. Now this brings up another caveat that is associated with another very common problem and that is when all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. And that means that depending upon who you consult to help you solve a particular problem or arrive at a solution is going to determine what kind of information you're being exposed to. So it's very important when you're selecting someone to work with, particularly in the case of chronic, unresolved, undiagnosable symptoms, who has a broad background, a broad arena of information from which to draw so that they can point you in the direction of correction and not necessarily apply the skill or the strategies that are appropriate within their particular point of view. Now I want to mention one other caveat here because it's pertinent to the conversation that we're having today and that is if anything can cause anything, how do you know what's causing what? Now this can be one of the most frustrating experiences for anybody experiencing chronic symptoms. Particularly because when you look at these chronic symptoms through the eyes of convention, oftentimes all you see is a nail because the person looking at it with you only has a hammer. Or you look through the eyes of convention and all the tests are negative, so you see nothing. However, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Now this is the true benefit of the matrix assessment profile because we're looking at things nobody else is looking at in ways that nobody else is looking at them. So let's look at a simple example. Let's take something like osteoporosis. Now osteoporosis is considered to be a disease associated very frequently with the aging process, with lack of proper nutrition, with lack of exercise, or perhaps even associated with another well-established disease that's producing a secondary osteoporosis. However, when we look at this condition through the eyes of the matrix assessment profile, we may see things a little differently based on things that we know to be true about how the body works. For instance, the human body is an acid-producing machine. That means in response to everything you come in contact with every day, your body produces a waste product in the form of an acid. Now this acid has to be eliminated every 24 hours or it has to be stored. In order for it to be stored, it's going to have to be neutralized or buffered because it's very corrosive. In order for it to be buffered, it requires certain raw materials. The body's first priority is oxygen. The next priority is minerals. When the mineral supply in the diet is inadequate based on the demand for nutrients to buffer the stored waste product, then the body begins to rob calcium and phosphorus from the bone, producing a condition known as osteoporosis. Now this is just one of many conditions that are considered to be diseases that in my experience and my opinion are simply symptoms of imbalances and deficiencies that are acquired as a result of the interaction of the various components of the human matrix over a period of time. Now this can include things like your genetics, it can include the environment, it can include food choices, behaviors, habits, dietary choices, lack of exercise, uh, excess exposure to toxins, as well as a wide variety of other things that are all available for us to look at within the context of the matrix assessment profile. So in future videos, we're going to explore a lot of these conditions, including things like acid reflux, elevated cholesterol, anxiety, depression, diabetes, and even insomnia and cancer. And we're going to look at what some of the other possibilities might be that allow these things to go on for so long 
in so many people without an accurate or adequate diagnosis as to why you are experiencing it. I'm Dr. Richard DiCenso. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I look forward to exploring a new way of thinking with you again in the near future.